Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. Today's episode's coming to you at 4.40. Huh. I feel like it's later. I'm tired again. I don't know, I've been waking up very tired and then having trouble sleeping. It's a real nightmare. I think it's probably, a, you know, it's definitely a me problem. I've been drinking coffee late to stay up late and it's probably affecting my quality of sleep. I'm, I'm trying, we're, we're figuring it out. I'm on, I'm on the fix. I'm quitting coffee, cold turkey, except I'm not really. I just had my, in my cup in the morning. How you doing? How's it going? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. July 5th today? Yeah. Hanging in there. Been on the, on the grind, applying for jobs, writing school project work, living it up. I finished Braid. That was yesterday. Uh, I believe, I think the audio problems are all good now. Just kind of going over everything that's happened recently. I think the audio is fine. I finished Braid. I'm playing Slay the Spire on stream. Yeah. I'm gonna try to edit some Braid content together, but we'll see what I, how far I get. Not a whole lot, though. Hope you're hanging in there out there. I'm gonna ask you a question. We're gonna get going, all right? All right. Today I want to ask you, I asked this in my Discord today when I woke up. Because I've been writing a lot of job applications, and it's like, oh, hey, I gotta fix this. Do you have any grammatical uh, blind spots, I guess, or, like, consistent issues? For me, it's always the word it's. This is hard to say in spoken, because it's just it's and it's, but I always use the wrong form. Like, when I'm referring... So, uh, how could I put it in Monster Train terms, I guess, because this is what's on my screen right now? It's... I, I just, I use, I use it's, I-T apostrophe S as a possessive, so, but every way that I, uh, hmm, I guess you could say, like, it's multi-strike in terms of monstering, like, I need to use Huskermit's multi-strike, because you would use Huskermit's apostrophe S, but if you were to say it's multi-strike, that would not be apostrophe S. And I think that's stupid and a bad rule and the English language is dumb, but the real problem is that this is not something that gets caught by autocorrect. So I am just consistently wrong with this everywhere I write. I have to double check everything I write. You got any like these? My, my, mine is especially rough, I feel, because of the no autocorrect thing. It really causes me to struggle, but I digress. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Worm Constagian. Lighting, seal, darkness, patient, echo, infusion, titans, gratitude, return, soul. I feel like recently on Monster Train, I have played this combo and not taken Armor Shark and then absolutely got annihilated for it. I don't know if that really happened, but I, I have a memory of that happening. Uh, what do you want here? We have no ascension, so I think that strike gain echoes. I mean, these are both a little worse with no ascension, but... I think... I think I go friendly as a plus five for Echo because we have Sweet. I've done this many times and it's always a little bit tight, but I'm gonna use my great knowledge to make it not problematic. Because I'm a genius. Steel Shove, Stygian Banner, I'm down to take Spikes. Three, we have 80 health. All I have to do is not die to the boss. Now. A lot of times, in a lot of combats, you would find yourself wanting to play on... Oh, what a shame this hand is. You'd find yourself wanting to play on bottom floor to skip the second wave. Obviously not the case here, because clergy will just annihilate you. Clergy will eat your lunch if you do that. And it will not be pretty. No, wait on train steward. I need to kill this clergyman the seven times two. And then what I also need to do here, and why we're going to wait on train store, is I need to start building my echoes on top floor for this to be a clean fight. Again, I'm going to wait. There's no rush to play train steward when I can just fill out my echoes. Now is when I need to play train steward. We go here. The boss does not come with spikes, so go like this. Chef himself, as long as I pick these clergymen off, should win this if I throw some echoes up here. So, I'm feeling good. I swear it sounded like he took damage. Did you hear that? Didn't it sound like Discipled Inquisitor took damage there? Maybe that was just the sound he makes when he hits the ground? I don't know. Hmm. 
These are all really good. I think the best card here is Echo Transfer, sadly. Uh, the plus permanent, being able to convert temporary Echoes over the cap into permanent Echo, or permanent attack is very useful. Shelter is also pretty good here for more survivability, but, you know, also really like Bounding Echoes. All three of those cards, I would take all there if I could. Harness the Titan is god-awful. I will take Energy Siphon because it's zero and it is purple. Those are things that I care about. I'd love to see a Sweeper and a Multi-Strike here. There's an Endless. I wouldn't hate an Endless Shark. Hey, you know what? Endless Hot Shark? That's like second on my list. Offering Monument is always fun, but I think it's pretty bad here. Endless on Shark, plus 25. This is the early game monster, the early game titan himself. Not today, Wingsteel. It's capricious for sure. Uh, Wingsteel, oof, god, I don't want that shit. Young Shark should make- I mean, it's a clergy combat, we have endless plus 25 Shark. Combat 2 in general when you have a big Shark. I'm pretty sure I could play just Shark and win. I actually kind of want to- I kind of want to see here. I'm pretty sure if I don't do anything and I just play this Shark, I will win this combat and take zero. I'm curious because it would be- it's a good- it's a good data in- data gather. I guess I grab the collector though. I can, but it's it's an interesting thought. Yeah, definitely you can do that. Endless plus 25 shark solos this combat for you. That's pretty cool. You go, shark man. You play him three times on bottom four. I've, I spent four energy in that combat. That's gotta be a new low. What we got? Plus 10 consume. I mean, the, remember the last pack where every card was really good? Or... Wormkin, this was like the opposite, but plus 10 hosting kin with purple on it is fine. Hold over Crystallis, minus 1 Crypt Builder, plus 10 Ice Tornado. Definitely one of these cards is the correct idea. I'm actually drawn to the Crystallis because it's purple. And I'm one value stone away from this being a free purple every turn that also pays out 50 damage, which is really good now and decent later. Yeah, I really like this card the more that I think about it. Hmm. It's called Kalia, but he doesn't have the right upgrade. I actually don't think I take Cold Kalia with a plus 10. I think it is pretty awful. However, Keeper of Echoes with a multi strike? Alright, I'm interested. I'm listening. I think that that's okay. It's not ideal, and I'm hopeful I'm hopeful to see a better unit, but. It's a good uh, good way to cover myself, I suppose. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the Stygian banner here, because I'm still in the market. I'd love to see Shark. The duplicate is also very good here. Nameless Siren with a multi-strike, okay. I think that that is a better card than Keeper with a multi-strike. The end. And I am going to go in here and I'm going to duplicate and infuse the Shark. If there's a value stone in here, we're gonna have a lot of pack shards. There is. This is a lot of pack shards, but sometimes I will lose runs and I will kick myself for not taking useful pack shards. These are very good pack shards. The relic I took, the money I took, it's all been very useful. Caverns has... Oh, I was thinking one of these, actually, for the shark. I like Petrified Heart. I think the damage you take here is pretty negligible. And 10 across the board is pretty good. Gives... Uh, Nameless Siren, a little more wiggle room, for example. Yeah, I like that. I'm not li missing out on healing. Stygian is a clan with no healing. Uh, if you're if you're ever thinking about that event, does Stygian have healing? Maybe it does. Maybe there's a card I'm not thinking of. I have to think about it. But. Uh, in general, the rule of thumb is Petrified Heart is an absolute no-go on Awoken, and a lot of times it's bad in Umbra, because Umbra has a lot of lifesteal options. In Stygian, you have none. There is no card that heals in Stygian. In Melting, there is one. It is uh, Purifying Cleanse, heal 15, apply free vulnerable. A lot of times that card is not useful, just in general. Like, uh, if you're not playing a Burnout line specifically. And then, Hellhorn, there is none, I think? I think there's none in Hellhorn. 
I'm gonna do some soul searching to think about that one. And actually, I'd have to crack the logbook open. I'm pretty sure there's no healing in Hellhorned, and in Wormkin, I'm actually not sure. I knew this a lot more concretely pre-DLC than I know it post-DLC, because pre-DLC it mattered more. You saw that event more, uh, and that event was better. No, no, it hasn't, like, changed in any way. It was just better. Yeah, I mean, I can't really describe it in any other way. It was just a better pickup. Anyway, uh, I will check the... I'm actually curious. I will check the uh, logbook here. Um, I'm pretty sure Wormkin has no healing. But there might be some weird one-off card. Oh, yeah, there is. There's Glug Cider. There it is. I knew there was something. Because when I talk about this, someone inevitably brings them up and I go, Oh yeah, Bug Cider has healing. Yeah, 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 no, you're right. Similarly, Shadow Eater has healing in Umbra. Pinstone is pretty good. The Permafrost isn't great. But two Echoes, yeah, two Echoes for one energy is pretty hard to pass. You're right. Uh, these are terrible. Another plus 10 Sweeper, hate to see it. And I think this deck wants draw. I think there's a world where I take double space. Although maybe there is. Maybe you could play double space in this run. You know what? That might have been good. I should have thought about it a little more. Oh well. Because you can you could play double space here and you could play uh Keeper Siren Shaft. And that's okay. Minus one Kinstone. I wouldn't hold that card over. I do not wish... Eh, plus ten Titan's Gratitude is pretty good here. The tune makes it worthwhile. Let me roll for... I'm oh, looking for a holdover. Not sure what I'd put it on, but I'm looking for it. We'll make purple cards free. I also want to get rid of Steward. Steward, there's no need to hold for... Crystal Cloak, we have Endless Shark. Endless Shark, especially with the self infuse, he's just gonna sit here and he's gonna be a menace. He's gonna be an absolute monster. Yeah. You know what this run is probably gonna end up missing? I think I might actually end up just putting Keeper on the Nameless Siren. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let me look ahead. I'm going to make a choice. The plan is simple. I'm going to go to two events. If I find a tiny stone or a plus one space relic, I am going to... So I'm not going to do the infusion yet. If I find one of those, I'm going to take space after this. And we're going to play Keeper Siren Chef. And if I do not find one of those, I am not going to do that. Random artifact is good. I think I'll be fine. There's also the added benefit of looking at events to make Shark better. Relics are good because we could find Frostbite. I am getting pretty lucky on the draws here. Drawing... If I could always draw Shark turn 1, that would be optimal. Doesn't always work out, but when it does, you love to see it. Not really worried about missing Keeper. Keeper is just kind of along for the ride. And again, this is, the idea is pretty simple. You trade temporary echoes. I will get those echoes back. You trade them away for permanent attack. It's only bad if you have a reason that you need echoes on this turn. You know, I dunked on... I'm not really dunked on, but... I said that... Uh, what's that card? Name that card. I can't think of the name. What the hell? I'm gonna see it in a second. Oh, uh, Hosting Kin. That's the one. That it wasn't going to be very good, I think I was wrong. I think it is pretty good. I won 25 times too. Nameless Siren is going to scale ridiculously fast. The run becomes a number of hits problem, where we just don't have enough strikes to kill everything. But with the Endless Shark, and with the Old Over Crystallis, I actually think that we are okay. And I think that this run could be very strong. And the only thing I really need to think about is how I keep the Siren alive. Any answers to that question? She's 20 HP. Many, many answers. We will see what we see. Titan's Claws? You know what the best part about getting Titan's Claws is here? It's out of the card pool. <laughs> oh man, that card is so bad. Or that relic is so bad. Unnamed home for one energy? 
Yeah, that seems pretty good. It's purple as well. Patient Sarah coming up? You'll love to see it. Yeah, so we're gonna go... I could look at the trinket shop, but I don't really have the money. I guess I could re-roll it. Hmm. Kind of tempting, isn't it? Because I can look for a high roll here. Like, it is just double. Or not double. Plus two frostbite. This freaking... Freaking bozo forgot to mute Facebook. I apologize if you just heard that ping. That was on my end. I think I go right and I look for Incan Armor 2, really. Yeah. I'm gonna cut one Titan's Gratitude, because I don't like having two random discards of that effect. And I don't want to cut too many purples at once. Looking for Incan Armor 2. No Incan Armor 2. A chain. Dog. Ugh. No, Bone Dog. I'm okay. Maybe next time, boss. And I got one one on Fracture Frozen Lance. Deck's running out of cards. Remember there was a time where I used to always take Bone Dog? No longer. Just don't take damage. It's pretty easy, isn't it? I'm gonna have a lot of money and not a lot of cards to get rid of at the end of this, I expect. Hmm. The draw had to look like this eventually, we knew. Not the end of the world. This is remove consume, I should just slam it. I guess I shouldn't slam it, I should play it on the next turn actually. Oh well, it's fine. Now the biggest problem that this run faces is top 4 survival. We have a bit of it mitigated thanks to things like shark, but... Survival, survival in long term on the top 4 is definitely the biggest problem. Chef, he's a big ball of stats that dies very fast. So maybe I do want to play... Maybe there's something to play in Keeper here. Is there a way I could play Keeper? We'll see. We will see what we see. Yeah, I think you actually go like... Return Soul Energy Siphon here. And I can punch through this and put 25 in. Yeah, not a big difference, but it matters. This run is definitely a very big we will see situation in terms of how this one pans out. It might be fine, but we also might just explode. This boss doesn't have much of a chance. I will give you that. Crystal Cloak, more like... Get out of here. I didn't even look if this guy was dying, I just assumed. A Light Skip would be really good on this run, you know? That would be a great pickup. Dark kills another boss. What a monster. What a menace. A triple permafrost. When I when I streamed this game more frequently, I used to, if I ever picked up Capricious, I would run a bet on if I saw a triple permafrost pack. Soul Crushing Guilt is extremely good here. Hmm. Frenzy Swarm is also pretty good here. Urchin Spines isn't bad, but I'll take Frenzy Swarm. Permafrost on two different days cards is pretty good. You feel pretty silly not taking Titan's Claws now, don't you? Well, no, not really. One of those cards costs zero. I'm like, really, how, how'd you get in here? Ah, here it is. Minor Refraction. I said I was waiting for this. Here it is. Go Miner on Keeper. And then we play Keeper and Nameless Siren. Take space. It's all good. It is a little bit of survivability. Not a ton, but comboed with Soul Crushing Guilt should be enough. Now... If I have anything I would like to infuse on the Nameless Siren, self-infuse is pretty bad. I actually don't hate putting Keeper on the Nameless Siren to give her plus two, plus two, and five more starting HP. That seems pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Final answer, lock it in. Engage Pact, it's a Keeper into a Nameless Siren. I think our biggest pro our biggest trouble is survival, and this is a great boost to survival. Don't forget to take space from Arcus. 
Do not forget. Sometimes I think about if I feel like this game would be better if you could choose your draw priority units. Do I think that that would feel better or worse or the same? I think it would not make- it would make a slight difference, but... The difference of turn 1 versus turn 2 versus turn 3 for Shark is actually pretty minor, I feel. So I don't think it would make a huge difference. I'm gonna unnamed Tome down here. I wanna pop that damage shield, or spell shield off. I feel like I have a lot of purples I cannot play. I actually think these fractures should be higher on my list of cards to cut. Yeah, I think I need to get rid of them. I don't think it's worth it to play Titans here. I'd rather hold my... Yeah, hold these. Now we did roll an Incant Shard on top 4 already once. Typically pretty much a typically a pretty good feeling, pretty good sign. Bring back frozen lands. Frig your days, buddy. Or frig your stealth, buddy. I will play and there's no reason to play soul I'll play soul crushing guilt. There's no reason not to play soul crushing guilt there. I was gonna say no reason to play it, but there's really no reason to skip it. I have three echoes held over, or extra I should say. Oh, good either way, really. I don't have a whole lot of fear. I think that this run is done and dusted, but I don't want to. I don't want to call it too early, you know. I'm pretty sure this one's in the books, but there's a little bit of uncertainty here. I will say, it could maybe get away from you. You never know. I saved this unnamed home for something, but I don't remember what it was. I held on to it. I remember deliberately not playing it, thinking, yeah, I'm gonna play this later. What was I gonna play that on? I sure as hell don't know. Sirens do other times too. When I play the Keeper with her, she will look a lot more survivable. But even without the Keeper, I think that this would be okay. Because I have all this days now. Oh, hey, and actually all of this, all of this saying everything is fine and I lost. It was not as clean as I had expected, but also you pop, pump up your pack shards and everything's good. Up for survival. It's okay. Unearthed Remains is really good here, especially purple with a minus one. If you feel fear about taking Capricious Reflection, I hope that this run, which gave me a free multi-strike and like permafrost on days cards and all of this other good stuff, Hope that this changes your fears. I'm going trinket shop here. I want the pyre health. I want the removals. I do not need to go to two steel shops. I'm killing two fractures. I am opening the horde. I can't stop myself. I gotta see it. I think that the echo seedling is pretty good. If I wait, I can put it into... I can put it into any card with Return Soul, and Return Soul, I believe, is a temporary consume? Maybe not. No, I don't think that's the case. But I can also put it in on Earth Remains. Both of those are good. Oh, hey, double incants. I didn't even think about double incants. Wow. Sure, man. That seems good. Faulty Loader is bad. This makes our turn one on the Divinity significantly worse. No. We have one main problem, which is the Seraph fight, I think. The Divinity should be a cakewalk. This would be a great run for Chain of Gems. I'm gonna take this Invasion Trial, but I probably should not. I'm just overconfident. Up oh, turn one. Maybe not. 5, 10, 15. No, oh, this is 30 even. Uh, okay, and we're gonna cut it a little close here. This guy's definitely going to die if I play it like this. I'm gonna say Keeper Tanks. I think Chef Tanks.
30, and then I put a siren in the back. My hypothesis is that if Shep dies, I should still be okay. This is a pretty rough fight, but the this part of combat is not so bad. Oh, sad. The collector spawned up here. Huh. Dark bottom floor. I was gonna say we just silence, but I missed the collector. If I silence... You might have to be okay with that. I'm gonna lean back in my chair. This is a, this is a full relaxation finish to the episode. Okay. So... What do I think here? I think we buy our time. I think I full greed. I play self -mut mutilation here. I might be punished for this. I'm gonna skip return so This is a full greed play. This is the sort of play that could bite me. Also, oh my god, it's been all the purifiers infused. What a goddamn nightmare. What a disaster of a turn of events. Please. I demolish Frontline. Stop making me eat all these curses, I beg you. Thank you. So I bided my time for this turn where I get to play Unearthed Remains. And then realize that if I play the rest of these, I will take damage from self-mutilation. I think I play one more. I can play Echo Transfer, and the payout here is I just play Frenzied Swarm, and those become a tomorrow problem. And I sleep out. Yeah, I don't like that wave either. But now we have a base of six, which is pretty good. Kill you. My other feeling is that if Chef dies in Relentless, normally that's a death sentence. I think here it's not that big of an issue. Although, I guess our health is kind of low. I don't know which boss it is. Do you know which boss it is? This guy. Better than Trample Boss here by a lot. Chef will maybe live around. I do not think I want to stack Frostbite. Oh wait, I have Silence. 60. Alright, boss does 18 instead of like a million to me. Should still be kind of frightening because... But what I need here is I need Chef to get to a little more HP. That's actually fine. Also, Drew Soul Crushing Guild. Now it's extra fine. Yeah, on floating bosses we get to spam Dazed with Soul Crushing Guild. Well, not spam, but we get to play some Dazed with Soul Crushing Guild, which should help us quite a bit. I'll take another Soul Crushing Guild, absolutely. Double stack Frenzied Swarm, not as enticing. I have a lot of permafrosts, and that card's going to be hard to swing. What card did I want to duplicate? I had one in mind. I have no idea what it was. I was thinking about that duplicate, but for what? Aren't Kinstone, maybe? I don't know. I want to go see Incan Armor too, but maybe it's better to go look for double stack. I bet it's better to go look for double stack here. Fuck myself out of it. That fracture. I think Echo Infusion is actually pretty low tier. Oh, Box Slime's great. Plus 5 is almost worth it. I think Trader's Quill is not that exciting. Aruska is fine. Totem Fragment's also pretty good. I'm just gonna load up on Relics, yeah. See if there's a double stack in here. There is. That goes on the Soul Crushing Guilt. Sun Earth remains for sure for the minus one now that I think about it. This deck's energy hungry, so making cards that are expensive, because that card is three energy effectively, making that easier to play is very good. I look at Intrinsic here. Oh, Intrinsic, I'm okay. Intrinsic for Patient Seraph is very good. But otherwise, we have significantly pumped our power, and I think we're looking pretty strong here. This episode's only 29 minutes so far. I feel like it has been much longer. I'm gonna have to- I'm, I'm gonna put a lot on him here, but I also don't think it matters. 
Because when you look at it here, you're gonna go, oh yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that turn where I put 800 damage and three days on him is worthwhile. You know what? I think you're right, I think it is worthwhile. Shame, this is a, this is a problem that can happen where we draw Keeper and Shark on this turn, and you go, damn, how do you pick? And the answer is pretty easily, you skip the Keeper for sure. But, in theory, this draw order should be uncommon, and I don't believe we will see it a second time. The Silence, I suppose better late than never. I can wait, because I believe Seraph has to come to top floor next turn. So I can get my... yeah. Not losing anything can just get that free value. Even because skipping the Keeper is fine. Keeper is here as like an extra line of survivability, which I don't really need at this point. We are absolutely crushing through. Soul crushing through, if you would be so inclined. Maybe not. This is now positive to play Echo Infusion Purple. I would like for my man here to not take 45 from this enemy, though. I would still like for Chef to live in the Roman. I'm gonna bring in my tactical keeper here. Help along. The damage from Southern Pregnant has been kind of underwhelming. Keeper's gonna die. This is a risk. Not even a risk. This was a foregone conclusion. I knew this. There is no way he survives. It's fine though. Because again, just put another thousand into the boss. Our floor does crazy damage. The number of hits problem isn't even an issue because this is also Patient Seraph who has no problem. You always crush him on number of hits. He has extremely weak waves, but he puts out absurd damage. The only thing that I could really do wrong here, I feel, is play Shark. Well, 10, 70, 80, nah, I don't think it's worth it. actually becomes positive, right? Yeah. And it's neutral on the cost. The echo cost, that is. Yeah, this is a slaughter. Haul him off. Alright, get out of here. That is in one hit. So, basically, the game plan is actually I will daze the divinity, and I will kill the divinity in three turns. If, if there is a clear line of attack, the divinity will die. I have plenty of hits. I think this should be a good crush. Not my favorite time to draw Unearth Remains, but an acceptable one. A lot of damage that I would be leaving on the table if I didn't play it like this. No weight on the Kinstone. I will eat the Energy Siphon. I would have left a thousand damage on the table. I actually, I, I cannot believe this, Monster Train. How is this possible? How do I draw a Keeper Shark twice in a row? I said this wasn't really very likely. How could this happen? Two times, Monster Train. How could you do this to me twice? That's unbelievable. It's despicable. That lives at one, really? Could have killed the 2015. I'm gonna stop the harvest. Could have killed this guy for sure. I will. One, two. Okay, I wanna go like soul crushing guilt here. Yeah. That actually should be zero damage taken. No, wait, he has damage shield. Never mind. I was incorrect. Dark, you got this shit. Let him not, boss. I even think that with this bad draw order, there is still not much fear. As long as we keep... Uh, even even still, with just Shark, it's three hits, and three hits and the days is enough. But what did I tell you? I said it earlier. I think that even, even so, uh, the Keeper is probably not that important. The thing that I really wanted Keeper for was to tank for, for Chef, because Chef is on the death path here. But 
I'll draw him. I'll play him. I'll play Shark. Pop these two. It should, I should have significantly more health. I should have had a crazy strong frontliner out of this, I feel. Maybe not crazy strong. Good enough frontliner out of this. But alas, he's just a two-turn jump blocker now. He's been relegated. Definitely just silence here. The damage is real, but I will frenzy swarm it. We'll also go... I'm just going to put the Divinity in permanent timeout here with this one. There's 14 days on the Divinity. Looks pretty good. Now, all I have to do now is not die free relentless to the waves, which I think Shark should make pretty easy. What a what a crazy twist. Endless plus 25 Hot Shark at the start of the run. It makes the run pretty easy. Mm, shocking. Downright... Unbelievable. Out of just a friendly swarm here. And then middle, or this floor here, middle floor, bottom floor we don't have to think about. Uh, this is the last enemy that gets to do any damage to me. He comes with three spell shield? What the hell? That's a lot more than I thought. <laughs> wow. Yeah, oh, I thought he came with one. Like everything else. Should be a crunch, yeah. Good news too, because I didn't have a whole lot of counterplay here. Did I? And I'm gonna take the end turn button and we're gonna cash out. I'm putting 14 days on the divinity is pretty good. I think, anyway. Your mileage may vary. Pretty good one though. I was right about the Keeper. The infusion was all we really needed. Would have been nice if he could have sat there and provided, like, I don't know, probably... I would have provided about 20-20 in stats. If I were to take a guess, maybe a little more. But... It's not always that way, is it? Indeed it is not. Oh, well, alright. Square Farmer's Trusts. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.